Superhero movies are becoming increasingly popular. From Marvel to DC to everything in between, these superhero films have a visceral tone to them. We'll be looking at the top 10 most realistic superhero movies from this list. So let's take a look. Before we get started, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about these videos. At number 10, The Green Hornet, 2011. It's similar to Batman in many aspects. They don't have superpowers, just a bunch of high-tech devices and a desire to help others. Britt Reid, played by Seth Rogen, is a newspaper editor who joins forces with martial arts specialist to battle crime. They become vigilantes in order to prevent a Russian criminal from forming a super mafia in Los Angeles. There's nothing particularly bizarre or fantastical about it. The devices are exceedingly high-tech, but they're possible. Furthermore, Britt and Kato have no superpowers and are fighting a local mobster rather than a global menace. At number 9, Iron Man, 2008. The Iron Man suit could not possibly exist in today's world. However, despite the high-tech gadgets, the film is remarkably realistic. He's a weapons manufacturer who creates a fantastic mech. There aren't any fantastical components, either. Terrorists and another weapons manufacturer provide the greatest threat, not aliens. They battle with mech suits, rockets, and firearms along the way, not with supernatural abilities. It's interesting that the MCU was inspired by one of the more grounded superhero films. And number 8, Special, 2006. Michael Rappaport plays Les Franken, a comic book fanatic who begins to believe that he has superpowers after taking a new antidepressant. He sees himself as a telepathic crime fighter, but the cops see him as deranged and an aggressive individual. The filmmaking further explores the film's amusing twist. Most of the film's spectators are only given Les's bizarre point of view and are not allowed to observe reality. He's not actually special, he's merely high on hallucinogenic chemicals. But that's where the fun begins. Number 7, Defender, 2009. Defender is the film for you if you've always wanted to see Woody Harrelson as a superhero. Arthur Poppington, a loner with a fetal alcohol syndrome who talks the streets like a vigilante, is played by the great actor. He's driven by a desire to save a girl from corrupt officers throughout the movie. He also wants to track down Captain Industry, a mystery man who is accused of murdering his mother. It's a strange, gloomy picture with an intriguing protagonist. At number 6, Super, 2010. Rain Wilson plays Frank Darbo, a chef unhappy after his wife left him for a business owner. Then, he has a spiritual vision and becomes the Crimson Bolt, thinking God wants him to battle crime. He arms himself with a pipe wrench and begins doling out justice to anybody he believes deserves it, even if the crime is more of a nuisance. Super is an anti-hero film that examines their applications of a truly deranged individual attempting to administer his own warped version of justice. At number 5, The Punisher, 2004. Frank Castle is a deeply wounded man. Howard Saint slaughters his entire family in order to exact revenge on Castle for the death of his own son. Not just his immediate family, no, his entire family. This, in turn, sets off a chain reaction of vengeance as Castle seeks to retaliate against the Saint for retaliating against him. Castle becomes the Punisher and begins punishing, armed only with military-grade hardware and desire for vengeance. The film is a grounded action drama that favors realistic weapons over fantasy or science fiction elements. The violence is also depicted in a realistic and bloody manner. And number 4, The Batman, 2022. While The Dark Knight elevated the superhero genre with a grounded tale and mature issues, The Batman is probably more realistic. Essentially, this isn't even a superhero film, it's more akin to a film noir or old school detective narrative with superhero aspects. Even the villains are represented realistically, with Penguin and the Riddler ditching their previous comic book clothes in favor of a more real life style. This is a wonderful superhero film for those who dislike superhero films. And number 3, Noise, 2007. Falling Down meets Superman. It has a similar concept, and both protagonists have a comparative perspective on modern society. David Owen, played by Tim Robbins, is a lawyer who's grown tired of his life's incessant din. Noise, to be sure. Car alarms, beepers, birds, and the city's general goings-on all get to him. He transforms into the Rectifier and commits acts of heinous vandalism to silence the din of existence. It's a different type of superhero, one without powers and with dubious goals and methods. At number 2, we'll call him Kick Butt, 2010. He's played by young Dave Lazuski, a comic book fan who dresses up in a homemade outfit and wields a pair of batons. He joins forces with a deranged former cop dressed as Batman and his young daughter, whom he's trained to be a ruthless killer. They band together and try to take down a global mob boss rather than a global threat. The film is very grounded in reality, portraying its protagonists as unhinged individuals rather than valiant heroes. And at number one, Boy Wonder, 2010. Sean Donovan, the titular Boy Wonder, is an antisocial loner who is traumatized by his mother's death at the hands of a carjacker. 
Sean, who grew up despising criminals, decides to take crime into his own hands and becomes a vigilante. He murders muggers and pimps, but his delusions eventually catch up to him and he kills innocent people. This is an anti-hero film. Boy Wonder not only warns about the dangers of vigilantism, but also depicts a hero who caused far more societal harm than good. Well guys, that's it for this one. What'd you think about it? Let us know in the comments below. If you're new to our channel, be sure to sub and ring that bell to get notified about our latest videos. And thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.